Good morning and welcome to our morning prayer on Tuesday the 26th of May when we are in that period of thy kingdom come between Ascension Day and the day of Pentecost. Today also the church remembers the life and witness of Augustine, first Archbishop of Canterbury, who died this day on 605, John Calvin Reformer, who died this day in 1564, and Philip Neri, founder of the Oratorian Spiritual Guide, who died this day in 1595. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. As your spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and the judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 98. The refrain, The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre with the lyre and the voice of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sound praises before the Lord the King. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. Lord God, just and true, you make your salvation known in the sight of the nations. Tune the song of our hearts to the music of creation, as you come among us to judge the earth through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A 
A reading from 1 Samuel chapter 10, reading verse 1 to 10. Samuel took a phial of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him, and he said, The Lord has anointed you ruler over his people Israel. You shall reign over the people of the Lord, and you shall save them from the hand of their enemies all around. Now this shall be the sign to you that the Lord has anointed you ruler over his heritage. When you depart from me today, you will meet two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin of Zelzar. They will say to you, the donkeys that you went to seek are found, and now your father has stopped worrying about them and is worrying about you, saying, what shall I do about my son? Then you shall go on from there further and come to the oak of Tabor. Three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you there, one carrying three kids, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. They will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall accept from them. After that, you shall come to Gibeath Elohim, at the place where the Philistine garrison is. There, as you come to the town, you will meet a band of prophets coming down from the shrine with harp, tambourine, flute, and lyre playing in front of them. They will be in a prophetic frenzy. Then the Spirit of the Lord will possess you, and you will be in a prophetic frenzy along with them and be turned into a different person. Now when these signs meet you, do whatever you see fit to do, for God is with you. And you shall go down to Gilgal ahead of me. Then I will go down to you to present burnt offerings and offer sacrifices of well-being. For seven days you shall wait until I come to you and show you what you shall do. As he turned away to leave Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all these signs were fulfilled that day. When they were going from there to Gibeah, a band of prophets met them. And the Spirit of God possessed him, and he fell into a prophetic frenzy along with them. Our canticle is the song of Ezekiel. The refrain, the Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will spring clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses. A new heart will I give you and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. A reflection on the reading from 1 Samuel. Verse 7 says, Now when these signs meet you, do whatever you see fit to do, for God is with you. So Samuel has anointed Saul, and with the oil still dripping down his face, Saul is ordered to leave. But to confirm the action that Samuel has taken, Saul is told that he will receive a series of signs that will endorse God's choice of him as king. The signs are improbable and detailed, but according to the story, each one of them occurs exactly as foretold. Lucky Saul. For most of us, that degree of clarity over decision-making rarely happens. Mostly, as if we are in a swirling fog, we struggle through our quandaries, fumbling our way through huge ethical dilemmas and living with nagging uncertainty. Have we done the right thing? Is this what we should do? What might the best outcome look like? Only very, very infrequently are we vouchsafed certainty. Yet, it is also true that looking back across our lives, we may sense a providential pattern. We may see that the hesitant decisions we took years ago have resulted in unexpected and undeserved blessings. 
we may see that what once put us through agonies of doubt has nevertheless had wonderful effects. Of course, we might be deluding ourselves and creating a pattern where none really exists. But in truth, it doesn't feel like that. It feels as though the hand of God has been upon us, even in our darkest hours. It's as though while we are seeking certainty, God in love is finding us. And today's reflection came to us from Christopher Herbert. And now for our Gospel Canticle, the Benedictus or the Song of Zechariah. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Alleluia. As we come to our prayers of intercession, we give thanks to God for bringing us to this new day. And we ask that God be with us in our tasks that are before us today. And we pray for the world and its needs, for the church and her life, that God's royal priesthood would empower us by the Spirit, that those who wait on God may find renewal, and all people, that they may acknowledge the kingdom of the ascended Christ. We pray for this earth of ours, for productivity and for fruitful harvests. For all who are struggling with broken relationships, especially those that have occurred during this season of social isolation and lockdown. Through Christ, who ever lives to make intercession for us, we pray to the Lord. Lift up our hearts to the heavenly places and inspire us to serve you as a royal priesthood. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let all peoples acknowledge your kingdom and grant on earth the blessing of peace as we pray for Elizabeth, our queen, Boris, our prime minister, and all who lead us in this land, that they would do so with integrity and employ the wisdom and authority given to them by God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Send down upon us the gift of the Spirit, and renew your church with power from on high. Today, in the Diocese of Southwark, we pray for Shirley St. George the Martyr, for Barry, their priest in charge, for Andy, Hilary, and Carol, their assistant priests, for Liz, their reader, and for Ray, also a reader there at St. George the Martyr, and for all God's people there. In the wider Anglican Communion, we pray for the Right Reverend Dino Gabriel, Bishop of Natal, Southern Africa, and for the Right Reverend Dr. Samuel Iziofo, Bishop of Aguata, Nigeria, for all priests and people in their care, for our bishops here in the Diocese of Southern 
Christopher and Jonathan, Richard and Carraway, and all priests and people in their care. And for the bishops in our link dioceses in Zimbabwe, for Ignatius and Eric, Cleophas and Godfrey, for all clergy and people in their care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May peace abound and righteousness flourish, that we may vanquish injustice and wrong. Help us to proclaim the good news of salvation and grant us the needful gifts of your grace. And we do so as today we pray for those who need our prayers, who are sick in body, mind, and spirit, who are in hospital, hospices, or care homes, or indeed being cared for in their own homes. Among them, we pray for Mick and Ruth, Nikki and Diane, Helen, Enid and Alec, for Jennifer and Reuben, Una and Ted, Don, Marie, Gabrielle, for Barbara, for Gloria, for Rosie and Martin and the rest of the Huish family. We remember also those who are bereaved at this time, those who miss their loved ones, whether they lost them through COVID-19 infection or another reason. We remember the Ledet and Forbes families, the Bates, the Messer, the Scorchy families, the Angus, the Corbin, and the Holyoke families. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for those who have died in the faith of Christ, those whose faith was known only to God, those who will die this day all alone, and those who have died this past night all alone, we pray that their souls and the souls of Maggie and Ruth, Roy and Verna, Ron, Sharon, and Don, and all the faithful departed through the mercies of God would rest in peace and rise in glory, and that the light of Christ would perpetually shine upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so we commend the world for which Christ prays to the mercy and protection of God as we gather our prayers together in the collect. Almighty God, whose servant Augustine was sent as the apostle of the English people, grant that as he labored in the spirit to preach Christ's gospel in this land, so all who hear the good news may strive to make your truth known in all the world through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for tuning in to Morning Prayer on this day when we remember all those saints, Tuesday the 26th of May. And from this week, we are going to change things up a bit. We're going to have Morning Prayer and Complain. So do tune in to Complain tonight, which is Night Prayer, and that is going to be on at 9 o'clock tonight. So we look forward to being with you then. In the meanwhile, do have a blessed and peaceful day. Thank you.